Mephilus the Dark hasn't been in any main Sonic games since Sonic 06. He has been referenced in the Sonic Rivals series, and appeared as a playable character in Sonic Runners, but he has literally been non-existent since the game he was introduced in. So, why is it that Sonic fans are still begging for him to come back? Sonic fans are famous for never letting any characters be forgotten. Even the background characters in the comics get some love every now and then. My last video I talked about how this character looks like Infinite. He looks so identical to Infinite. That's the one thing that trips me up because the one person that was talking about being afraid was the other character. So I wonder if this is, uh, if one of them turns to be Infinite. But Mephilus is on a whole other level. Many characters, such as Mighty and Rei, have managed to return to the franchise after being forgotten, but Sega have actually refused to bring Mephilus back due to him being a one-off villain, yet fans are still talking about the twisted Dark Hedgehog. Before I talk about Mephilus himself and why he was an effective villain, let me tell you guys of two instances where Sonic fans started to shout about this character long after his initial appearance. The first notable case would be with Sonic Generations, a game which explored Sonic's past and is considered to be one of the greatest Sonic games. The main antagonist of the game was a monster which seemed to consist of nothing but darkness, with the ability to travel through time and space, devouring timelines. Immediately people started to claim that this was a fragment of Mephilus which had slipped through time, and there are plenty of fans who still believe that. In fact, Ian Flynn, who used to work on the Archie comics of Sonic the Hedgehog, stated on a forum that he believed that Sega intended to imply that the Time Eater was the leftover matter of Mephilus, but Sega have never actually confirmed this. But the Time Eater wasn't the only thing in Generations people were talking about. When Crisis City was revealed to be a level, people started to question if the events of 06 still existed in the Sonic timeline, meaning that it must be possible for Mephilus to still exist. Not only that, but some fans were disappointed that Sega didn't bring Mephilus in as a boss battle, either to replace the Egg Dragoon or to replace the Silver the Hedgehog rival battle. The second notable case came years later with the release of Sonic Forces. When Sega started showing off their newest character, Infinite, fans immediately started to draw connections between him and Mephilus. The Infinity symbol revealed in the trailer resembled the symbol made by Mephilus with the two Chaos Emeralds at the end of Shadow's story. The way Infinite levitated resembled how Mephilus levitated, with them being in similar positions while also being surrounded by an aura. The thing that connected them the most was the red and yellow eye. Before it was revealed that Infinite was just a regular jackal behind his mask, many believed that his eyes were naturally red with glowing yellow irises, much like Mephilus's. So again, people started saying that Infinite was connected to Mephilus, being a reincarnation of him, or being another fragment of his split soul, and even when Sonic Forces did come out, people still believed that Infinite was the new Mephilus, with some people also arguing that Infinite was so alike to Mephilus that Sega would have done better if Mephilus was just brought back for that game. There was also the brief case involving Mephilus' appearance in Sonic Runners. While there were many unlockable characters in that game, people did believe that Mephilus' appearance meant that Sega intended to use the character again in a bigger title, but that's never happened. There was even a little bit of trivia circling among fans, which claimed that Shadow resembled Mephilus in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games when completing a ski jump. Perhaps Sega could be blamed for constantly teasing fans, with all of these potential references to the character, but it's not like they are deliberately trying to keep the discussion fresh. I have stated before that I believe Infinite is a new Mephilus, but by no means do I think he should have anything to do with the character. What I mean is that he is a new character which we're supposed to love for being dark and intimidating, but he just hasn't gathered as much respect as Mephilus. Why? Let's take a look at Mephilus' character to see just why fans want him back instead of new characters. The simplest way to start this analysis is to say this. Mephilus was a well-developed character. While his story was slightly flawed, he was written in a way which made him stand out. We got to know Mephilus through two stories, Silver's and Shadow's. We saw him succeeding in manipulating Silver, and we saw him failing to manipulate Shadow. In both stories, he is very much the same character 
but we are made to react to him in different ways because of the different situations. As Silver, we can't exactly do much with him. It's clear that he's not trustworthy because we are blessed with the eerie soundtrack which accompanies Mepolis everywhere he goes. Dan Green does a perfect job in voicing the character, giving him that edge to his vocal mannerisms which make it sound like he's constantly up to something. With my help, you can. Because I have the power to travel through time. Mephilus is made to creep the player out, even though he claims to be helping us save the future. And in Shadow Story, we see his more violent side. He's not aggressive and doesn't actually confront Shadow like Infinite would do, but he's not afraid to show off his powers, and he'll fight if Shadow gets him out of hiding. By the time we're fighting him in Shadow Story, we're well aware that Mephilus has bad intentions, and we even get to explore his history. We get to see why he hates Shadow, yet wants to control him. We understand why he wants to destroy the world, because he's part of Solaris. If you compare his development to someone like Infinite, he doesn't actually feel as forced. Infinite was supposed to be as threatening as Mephilus, considering that they both tried to end the world with something Sun-related, but we didn't get to see Infinite doing anything else besides talking to Eggman or threatening our character. Mephilus didn't even need to threaten anybody to come across as a murderous villain, and that worked out better when compared to Infinite, who was constantly talking about killing everyone and teaching them fear and pain. The next thing to talk about would have to be what Mephilus actually did in the game and how he impacted the story. He manipulated events to go his way. Iblis didn't do that. Eggman didn't really do that. Silver didn't do anything effective without it being the influence of Mephilus. And when everything was slowly being revealed to the player regarding the Solaris project, Mephilus came out and finally fused with Iblis to become the time-eating god. And when he did become Solaris, the atmosphere of the game felt empty, dark and depressing. Sonic was dead. Everyone was mourning for him. We had to run through all of the levels we had previously completed in search of the emeralds, with a somber soundtrack slowly building up to be more hopeful as we avoided the wormholes which would kill us. This was all because of Mephilus. He put the player through this. He toyed with the characters and the player. The Time Eater from Sonic Generations had barely any mystery to it, and it wasn't really its own character. And the idea of that thing controlling and devouring time was nowhere near as terrifying as Solaris. As for Infinite, his actions led up to nothing. He defeated Sonic at the very beginning of the game, but left no emotional impact on the player because it was literally about two minutes until we got him back. His past with the Avatar felt like it should have shaped how our character behaved, while also displaying how much of a threat he was as a villain. But the flashback scene was short, and he really didn't feel like much of a personal enemy to our character. As for the end of the game, if anything, it's all put together by Eggman. Eggman took the Phantom Ruby from Infinite and used it for himself in the final battle. Infinite was just a boss battle who popped up every now and then, and once he was gone, the game moved on and ignored everything he had done. Overall, he just felt easy to deal with, while Mephilus felt like more of an undefeatable pain in the neck. I guess now I should mention personality, which has been covered a little bit already. Mephilus had a very clear personality with motives which made sense for someone with the way he thought and acted. He craved destruction. He liked watching people suffer and enjoyed manipulating people just to watch them struggle. He laughed at Elise when he killed Sonic, and he didn't even have any personal hatred for Sonic. He just needed him dead to get what he wanted. Mephilus was also relatively unpredictable. He was on his own side. He could go after anyone. Infinite, on the other hand, was loyal to Eggman and simply obeyed his commands. He hated everybody just because of some past fight with Shadow, and even when he acted more unhinged in episode Shadow, we knew he was just going to try getting revenge on Shadow with his new powers before going after Sonic. We knew he would fight Sonic because he fought him in the intro. All he did was talk about what he didn't like and how much he liked crushing the weak, even though most of the time he was just sparing us out of pity. Infinite was too loyal to be considered an unpredictable threat, 
and Sega depended on his dialogue to communicate his personality rather than his actions. But his actions would be what had the most impact. So as much as he liked saying he enjoyed killing people, him sparing us made his personality seem almost softer than Mephilus's. If Mephilus ever chose to get into a fight, he intended to kill his prey, or at the very least he wanted to mentally destroy them. I suppose the final thing that attracts fans to Mephilus is his scare factor. When I first saw his crystalline design back when I was a kid, I found him to be very unsettling. He had no mouth and no eyelids, so he depended on his words and gestures to express himself. He moved in this slow and creepy manner, with his head bowed down. His eyes were like those of a reptile's which glowed in his crystalline form. Not to mention that the stitches on his flesh-like eyes were just really uncomfortable to look at. He had no nose and no feet either, so he just looked like something that wasn't supposed to be alive. As mentioned earlier, his sly-sounding voice and calm nature made him all the more terrifying, and the music should really speak for itself. Not just the music for the cutscenes, but the battle music as well. the chanting, every instrument is used to remind the player that this character is the embodiment of darkness. He doesn't just embrace the dark like Infinite does, he is the dark. Infinite, on the other hand, has a soundtrack which expresses his anger and desire to crush the weak. It sounds like it belongs to someone who wants to start a fight. His expressionless face doesn't have the same impact as Mephilus's because he is wearing a mask, and beneath that we know that he's just a normal jackal. Without the ruby he is powerless, while Mephilus does not depend on anything to power him. The Time Eater's theme actually resembled Mephilus's. <laughs> But because it was just some big goofy monster with nothing to its character, I didn't really feel like I had anything to fear. So, with all of these things in mind, it's pretty clear that Mephilus was a good villain. If a game like Sonic Forces or Sonic Generations was released with Mephilus as the antagonist, players would get chills simply by knowing his past actions. But Sega will not bring the character back, because he was never intended to be a recurring villain. I've already done my own discussion on how Mephilus could return to the franchise despite his literal non-existent status, so be sure to check that out if you want to know my thoughts on how he could technically return. But that won't change the fact that Mephilus is a character Sega is trying to bury. Personally, I think his appearance in 06 is iconic, and it will be more effective if he doesn't return, since that would mean that Sonic 06 is his game and no one else's, and people will only get to see him by playing him in the game he was designed for. But I also wouldn't be against the idea of him coming back. It might be best for Sega to at least give it a try, because so many of their fans want to see Mephilus again over characters like the Time Eater, Zavok, Lyric and even Infinite. What do you guys think? Should Mephilus be left alone, or should Sega dig him back up? Or should they try and make an even better character who could become a recurring villain? Maybe by even polishing up Infinite's character. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I'm Lord Danny, signing out.